A simple refinement to a very basic NLP technique that can change everything. Stay tuned. Damon here with NLP Gym, and I'm here with Mark Andreas, and we're going to talk about aligning perceptual positions. But before we do that, if you haven't already, please click subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can get these videos on a regular basis. Today's training was pretty awesome. What did you yeah. think about it? Yeah, it went great. Yeah, yeah I was. Uh, yesterday was so good, and I was like, "Is this? Was that the end? Is that as good as it's going to get?" And it's. Um, I had my profound change and transformation, or was it going to continue today? And I would have to say, I was not disappointed. Yeah, <laughs> it continued. Yeah. It got really strong and very powerful, and I was so surprised that something as simple as aligning, really aligning perceptual positions really made such a huge difference. Yeah. So yeah, for some participants I talked to that was the most powerful part of the training so far. So what can you tell me about that or you know how did your mother come about finding out those distinctions and how important they are or tell us more about your experience teaching that? Yeah, so basically if you have basic NLP training, we know about the basic perceptual positions of my self position or observer position or taking other positions, stepping into somebody else's shoes. And so with the aligning perceptual positions, we discover that often when we think we're in one of those positions, self position, I'm not actually fully accessing that experience. That there's um, maybe some element of dissociation, like I've pushed my feelings off to the side or I'm, I'm not fully associated into my experience of self. Mm -hmm. And so the aligning process is about having a full access to self-position, a full access to these other positions as well. Yeah, absolutely. And whenever I was doing it, I was thinking, oh, this is not going to really make a difference in this, what I was working with. What really surprised me was that I, when I did the, I wasn't surprised about the observer position. And when I went into the observer position, which you're not supposed to be invested in any other perceptual position, you're more just detached and observing. I wasn't surprised that I still was feeling like I was partially in kind of getting first position. In. And you said you made the analogy of like being one foot on the dock and one foot on the boat. And that's exactly how I felt. So I wasn't getting too much good information there. So the alignment was very useful on that. I think the surprising thing for me was when I was in first position, I didn't think there was any alignment that was needed. But then I realized that my voice and the other person's voice was coming out of my chest. Uh -huh. And then whenever I put the voice back in, my voice back in my throat and mouth and uh, the other person's voice back in their throat and mouth, it was suddenly like I, I felt embodied and I felt like the difficult feelings that I was dealing with with that person suddenly became my own. But at the same time, I was sort of big enough to be able to hold those difficult feelings and it was okay. Yeah, it was yeah. so profound to experience that. Nice. So going back to that metaphor, you know, if I have both my feet in a boat, that can be a useful position to be in. If I've got both my feet on land, I can walk around and that kind of thing. But if I've got one foot in the boat, one foot on land, it's an unstable position. And often we find, if we actually check in our experience, you know, our experience of being in that observer is like we're sort of, we're not really fully in that neutral place. Right. And, and we're still get, kind of getting hooked in and sucked into one side of the experience, so we're not really able to see it from that objective uh, perspective and get all the benefits of, of the resources from that perspective. Yeah. And, and, and likewise for, for self position or other position. Right, and it, it, it really surprised me. I did not expect that such a small refinement, what seemed like a small refinement, a small <laughs> shift, it just really made all the difference. You know? yeah. So if you're not quite sure what we're talking about. It's when whatever position you're taking, whether that's your own position, someone else's position, or observer position, it's actually making sure that you're seeing from your own eyes, hearing from your actual ears. And if you're feeling something that it's coming from your body or, um, yeah, it's coming from you. And it's, it's so funny because like, now that I think about it, um, there were so many times where I've done this exercise and yeah, my, I was seeing it from a different angle and not from actually where yeah. my eyes are, or I was hearing things coming out of my body or hearing things coming from a different, direction and there it just kind of that's an indication that something's not right or something's yeah, not aligned totally yeah. unless we ask these questions mostly we don't notice it it's unconscious you know experience mm -hmm. but once we ask these questions there are a number of people in the training that go yeah i thought i was looking from from my own eyes in the experience but when you asked me the question i noticed i was actually as if i was perceiving the situation a little bit 
off to the side from where I actually was. Or um, a few people made some comments like that. Once we, you start attending to your experience in this way and these finer distinctions, you start noticing, oh, it's not actually a line as aligned as I thought it was. Right. And even when we're experiencing life, like I'm standing here now, and I'm obvious, you know, I'm like in a first position. If sometimes we do sort of skew the our eyesight or, or change where we're hearing from, and I think we maybe we do that because we're not completely invested in right now. We're not completely present, or maybe we're experiencing something we don't exactly like, so we sort of halfway disassociate. Yeah. Because right after we did that, I felt like so in my body, and I felt so present, and it actually felt kind of like a flow state. Yeah. 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 Well, that's a great place to leave it I think of that, that you know it's a, a whole different angle of getting to this place of real presence and um, you know in the body kind of experience vice versa having, having a, a really objective observer and you know being able to be cleanly in each of those positions. Wonderful workshop, uh, Core Transformation. It's been really incredible. We just got, we wrapped the second day today. We got one more day to go. And I'm thinking if, if I get, I've already gotten my money's worth <laughs> at this point. I got my money's worth on the first day. So if this goes any deeper and there's even more to this, then uh, I don't know, it's just gonna blow my mind. My mind's already blown. Well, tomorrow's a big day, so we'll see, we'll yeah. see what happens. Check out our website, nlp-gym.com. Follow us on Facebook for real-time updates on free practice sessions and upcoming workshops like the one I'll be teaching in October 22nd and 23rd, NLP elicitation of values and hypnotic installation. And also, if you, like I said at the beginning, if you haven't already, please click subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can get these videos on a regular basis. Take care. Not a noisy place, it just makes it easier. Okay, it's going. Alright. I'm gonna say this as <laughs> soon as we start recording. Um, a simple way to refine a very simple NLP technique that could change everything. Uh, how about we'll do that? I'll say it and then you say stay tuned. Cool. Okay. Do you, do you mind if I make a suggestion and we take the hood up. down? Yeah. yeah. <laughs>